हेलो सर आई एम मोहम्मद नुमान इकबाल एंड द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ एश एम एस चैप्टर ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ एश एम एस चैप्टर आई वॉन्ट टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर चैप्टर एश एम एस चैप्टर इज वेरी वर्सिटाइल सोसाइटी विच इज वर्किंग फॉर द फील्ड एच वी ए सी इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट सो एश एम एस चैप्टर है Ashe Bangladesh chapter and uh, we are very thankful uh, to all of you who joined this session and sir ananta sir thank you so much for giving us your precious time thank you sir thank you so much you're welcome thank you uh, i welcome esteemed participants and valued members uh, to this enlightening session on green buildings in reducing hvac load Uh, hosted by uh, ashmas chapter in collaboration with ash bangladesh chapter we are thrilled to have each of you here dedicated to exploring sustainable solution and advancing our collective knowledge in hvac system i would like to thank sir ananta ahmed who gave us proper and precious time to organize this event sir thank you so much <laughs> for your time uh, i would like to thanks again please continue sir thank you so much Thank you. Should I go start the session? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm going to share the screen. Uh, yeah, that's a huge number. Thank you for joining in. Uh, what you can do, all the participant, you may uh, use the chat box to introduce yourself, so we know who is who, and as required, we'll we'll communicate with you. Okay. so can go into a chat box uh, say your name uh, place uh, institution organization right and say hello to everybody uh, because if you want to listen to everybody that would be a long time okay so do that on the chat box please thank you so today uh, thank you very much for joining in uh, we will going to explore some information uh, regarding hbc load and green building Uh, it's a huge subject in terms of energy it consume uh, contribution it makes to the carbon emission and all of us into the career related to hbac so we need to learn a little bit about it if we want to make ourselves uh, a better building better indoor space in a meaningful way and sustainable way so our uh, subject is today importance of green buildings in reducing hbc load so i'm going to connect all the dot today uh, in a very summarized way and then uh, you guys have to have uh, curiosity to go deep into it i'm also created a uh, pdf version of this presentation which i shared with uh, fasal bhai and he will share with you uh, so you can uh, read it because uh, there's so much content i'm not going to read all of them i'm just going to touch and go because you only have one hour to do so so today uh, we'll do uh, information on green little bit uh, we'll learn a little bit on uh, what is green why you need green and then we'll connect the green building with hbc and how the hbc system in green building should perform and then we go into little bit of building design and optimization to see how we can reduce the hbc load and then we learn little bit uh, on uh, building optimization uh, design concept and then we will learn little bit efficient hbc design and energy efficient building in blab again like i said it's a huge subject so it will be difficult to Uh, finish everything detail in this one hour, but I'm gonna just touch and go so you can get see. About me, my name is Anand Ahmed. You, as you know, uh, I was in Canada and USA for 22 years. Uh, there, my professional was uh, real estate development, and then uh, during the development of buildings, I learned the sustainability. And I come back to Bangladesh as 2010 uh, and promoting this green building concept in Bangladesh. Uh, and now i'm consulting 300 plus project in bangladesh uh, in green building 
Uh, about my credentials, as you know, that there's a five different category of uh, green building rating system in LEED, uh, new building, existing building, interior, homes, and neighborhood. I happen to have uh, credentials on all of them. I'm also a UGVC faculty, and my organization, uh, 360 Total Solution Limited, is a silver member of UGVC. So if I put these three together, none of the person in the world has this three things combination together. I'm the only person in the world with five UGVC credential, faculty status, and silver membership. The reason I say that, so everything that I'm gonna talk about uh, ongoing now on, uh, you'll understand that has a value uh, to it. I just wanna make sure that you guys become interested enough to dig in, make sure that this information add value to your career and value to your services that you provided to this uh, art, I can say. Uh, my company, a little bit on uh, my company's 360 Total Solution Limited, uh, we make a uh, commitment that all the information, all the time on green is free. So if you need any information related to green building, uh, you just communicate with us, we'll provide it to you with uh, free of cost. Right? Soft copy of all the guidelines, and everything like that. And any question even you have, uh, if, you, if you ask the question in WhatsApp, I'll answer it. So this is an information handbook that we created. It's a 160 page information handbook. It's called Green Building and Sustainable Development Information Handbook. In this handbook, we put together three different rating system side by side to see uh, how the credit works, all the credit details in there. And there's a costing template and the green building process in there. So the three rating system R is a BD plus C new building, ID plus C commercial interior and existing building. If you need a soft copy of that, just let me know. I also have a YouTube channel, uh, has 60 plus videos. Uh, this video will be there too. So if you later on uh, use as a reference, you can go in and check the video and you can see a lot of green building tour in the video, in the channel. And if you subscribe that, you can regularly update it on the new upload videos. So I request all of you to subscribe this channel and then stay updated uh, on the green building process that happening. Most of the video are in English, so it will be okay for you to understand. Okay, that's the introduction part. Now let's talk about green. I see green very differently than others, okay? Green is really very simple. So I just uh, request you to pay attention last next few slides. If you understand this few, few slides, you will understand green very well. Use only what we need, no more. That's great. We need to use it, whatever we need. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But we really do a lot of waste in all segment of our life. Okay. So if we don't do waste, we become green automatically. We do waste on energy, water, resources, materials, health, time and money, and all our business operation plan policy, we, we have waste. So our job is to reduce this waste. Okay? If we reduce it, we'll be better. We'll be 25% better. Okay? So in green building or green concept or sustainability concept, whatever you say, is the same thing in a different name. To me, green is the way to go, the best business decision you can make. I say that with conviction. Okay? And I'll show you next uh, few slides why I say it's the best business decision. Okay? Number one, green will help you to save energy, water, resource, money. Okay? It will help you to save energy, water, resource, money. And if you do those four, earth will be safe. Okay, so we just have to do our part to make sure we save those things. Consultant like us or professional like us, we just show people where they are doing the waste and how they can save. Second, these are the items that we can uh, learn to save those four things. Behavior change innovative ideas, energy efficiency, technology, efficient resource management, 
information and knowledge which you are gathering today, future thinking, think of our next generation and positive and responsible mind. If I am responsible, then I will do practice great. The second thing it will teach us to reduce, reduce waste, single-use plastic, environmental pollutions and carbon emissions. If you do reduce those four, impact on environment will be reduced. How you going to do that? It's called 8R. We heard about recycle, reuse and uh, 3R, but this is 8R. We think, refuse, reduce, reuse, refurbish, repair, repurpose and recycle is the last option. So think about it. If we do those eight things on every single thing that you do, just think about it and then do what is possible, then we will be green. The most important part of green, this is, it will help you to increase, improve indoor environment, which will improve your health, which will improve your productivity. And if you are a corporation, the employee loyalty, and all together it should increase your profit. You guys may know the green building or sustainable development, all they are based on three play, pillar. It's called environment, economics, and health of the people. On other words, it's called people, planet, profit. Meaning everything we do, if we put those three things together, we'll be fine. Right? How I'm going to do that? Indoor environment, I'm going to make sure that my lights are okay. Try to use natural light if it's possible. Air is okay. Fresh air and oxygen level. Temperature is okay. Comfortable for more better performance. Sound level is okay. Views is there. I can uh, have a views to the sky and greeneries. Humidity need to be controlled. And dust level need to be controlled. If we can have these parameters set properly in our indoor environment, our health going to be better and our productivity is going to be better. And the last part of this equation is action. If we learn everything, we know everything, but we don't do nothing, then it's all waste of time, waste of learning. So how you, what is the action going to be? The decision. The top level management should make a decision. Your life, you are the top, man, top management. So you have to make a decision. Then you make a plan. What I'm going to do? I'm just going to put the lights off today. I'm just going to fix the leak that I have in my water faucet. Simple like that. And then execute that. Execute those ideas. Right? Then you'll be okay. Little bit broader. It should be corporate or institutional decision. Proactive plan. Smart implementations. Team practice. Innovative ideas. And regular update. If you do those things, these are the great. This is really basics of great. I think you understand by this time that none of this really has any cost associated with that. Right? Cost part will come later if you want to invest for better efficient machineries, efficient technologies. Then the cost come. But for now, it's just what we can do without cost. And if we do all this, it will create profit and that's the best decision you can make for the business. Okay? And I think you all agree with me that every time we uh, exhale the CO2, carbon dioxide, and inhale the oxygen, we are polluting the uh, globe, right? So, and also everything that we use, the light, fan, comfort, uh, our uh, clothing, uh, the food, everything has a footprint to keep me alive. So I am personally responsible you are personally responsible for global warming. So everybody should do their part individually, family-wise, officially, institutionally, community-wise, even by national-wise. We should do our part to mitigate all this that we are doing as much as possible. Right? So sustainability is not an option these days. It is our moral responsibility to do our part. Right? If I do my part, I'll be happy knowing that I did my part. Okay. Now, that's basic green and sustainability. Now, let's talk about global warming. I'm sure all of you know this, but I just want to touch a few slides to show you where we are at. Okay. This is the graph. 
that our uh, carbon dioxide level or CO2 level going up, 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 up. This is 2010. If you bring 2020, it will be even much, much more higher. And every year we are breaking record of temperature. And we see the climate change around us every day. So this is not a rocket science that is not there. Now this is happening because of carbon emission or carbon footprint, you can say. Everything we do, it will be calculated in one, one terminology called carbon footprint, right? So the carbon footprint as a whole, these are the sector that culprit of carbon footprint. Okay, what are the sectors? Where the carbon emission come from by sectors? Industry do 33%, transportation do 28%, and buildings do 39%. Okay, I'll show you how. It's a US uh, data, but conceptually is all around very similar, maybe plus minus one or 2%. Okay, so building is the main culprit of carbon emission as a whole. Okay, now in a building, there is equipment we need to keep our indoor environment better. It's called HVAC, heating and cooling system, right? So the building that emission carbon, part of that comes from HVAC, which is our subject today. I'll show you how much it is. The building is 39%, industry is 33%, transportation is 28%, right? I'm going to show you step by step how we can find out what is the carbon emission from the HVAC? Now again, see this diameter, the electricity is 27%, okay? And then industry is 22%, transportation is 28%, right? Then the agriculture and commercial residential building is separately. So now focus on this electricity 27% as a total carbon footprint culprit or cause, okay? Let's go. Now see, the buildings in the United States, 72% uh, of the total electricity consumed by buildings. 39% of energy use, 40% of raw material use, 30% of waste output, and 14% of potable water consumption. All this converted to carbon footprint then become 39% of carbon footprint comes from the building. Now, about this 72% that building consume the energy, 56% of that is HVAC load. Interesting, no? And other things, light equipment, others is others. So 56% of that 72% is HVAC load. Let's now do the calculation. So total carbon emission is 100%. Electricity is responsible for 27%. Building is responsible for 72 of that 27%, which is 19.44%. And HBC is responsible for 56% of that 19.44% equivalent to 10.87% or you can say 11%. Think of it. Our HBC is causing 11% of total carbon emission in the world. If we can fix it by 5-6%, or 10%, we can make a huge contribution to this climate change fight that we are fighting together. Okay. So, now the little bit narratives that uh, heating, ventilating, and air condition together is called HBC, and 50 to 60% for Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Right? Very similar. We are very similar weather. So it is that way. Again, like I said, I'm not going to read all these uh, slides. I'm just going to uh, do the keywords and share the slides with you so you can understand. Now, this HBC system, when you do the design, there are some standard that you have to follow. What is the efficiency level? What, what you have to maintain inside? What temperature you have to maintain? What is the right temperature? What is the right humidity? What is the right dust level? Right? What is the right uh, CO2 level? That comes ASHRAE. The ASHRAE is one of the most popular and most scientific standards 
for indoor air quality, right? There are some other uh, standard like ECBC, ESNA and others. But if you read the uh, uh, equivalent of each other, you'll see find they're very similar to each other because these are science-based data they give us to understand what we have to do to maintain a better indoor air quality. See, we are the men cannot give birth, but we do give birth to buildings together. And if we can make it better, make it positive, make it natural, then it will last 50, 60, 100 years with our name on it, with our signature on it, right? In commercial building, HBC load even higher. So if you can reduce that load, it will make a huge business sense to that commercial entity. And the number is huge. I'm going to go to that number very soon. So it is make business sense to explore how to reduce this HBC load. So designing for energy efficiency through building simulation and optimization. This is very important. Before we design, we should do simulations, run different options to see how that option affect the performance of the building, therefore uh, need for the HBEC load. Okay? So, say example, if you have a 5-inch wall, your heat gain will be, uh, say, 10. Now you have a 10-inch wall, the heat gain going to be reduced to 8. If you have 15-inch wall, the heat gain will be reduced to 5. And then you have to cooling down that 5. Just a number, right? Hypothetically, to give you understanding. Right? So what is the simulation? There's a number of uh, simulation uh, software, Visual Dewey, EQuest, Energy Plus, IES, ETC, and you can find a few others. So we request all of you to learn a little bit today and do simulation based on those options. We're going to talk about that, how to, uh, what uh, changes the envelope performance today. So you know how to incorporate those options based on your locality based on your situation. So the building design and optimizations then come. Let's talk about building design and optimization a little bit. Okay. If you make a design, it's called passive design, called solar passive techniques. That means that you use most of the natural ventilation. You have reduced the heat gain significantly. You use uh, much of the daylight, right? So mechanical ventilation, mechanical light, uh, mechanical cooling or heating require less. We need it, but less. Then all load going to be go down. Okay? So what is the building envelopes? And what is that we are doing? See, the heat gain come from outside. Right? Heat come from outside to inside when you are cooling or opposite. Right? You have heating inside and outside is cold. So cooling, you leaking the cooling out. So you need more heating. Right? So this is the things that we are uh, dealing with. The heating and cooling and plus the ventilation part. So we talked about, we're going to talk about the uh, envelope and what is efficient building envelope. Okay? You also have to understand that Ashray or ESNA or other uh, standard gave us a number. Then what should be the energy load for HPC for 100 square feet space or 100 cubic feet space, right? Or 1,000 cubic feet space, right? Uh, how many people is there to make sure how much fresh air will be there? Good for the people. What PPM level of CO2 we need to maintain? What humidity level we need to maintain? You saw in my earlier uh, slide uh, in um, indoor air quality what we have to do, right? So make sure that we understand those standards and try to match or get better on this standard, okay? And all standard has a benchmark, okay? Uh, benchmark by uh, generalized benchmark. How much energy you need for light? How much energy you need for ventilation? how much energy you should use for uh, air condition or heating for certain space or certain square feet of space. So this benchmark, if we understand, 
and then learn how to reduce this, that will be uh, the key, right? So, these are all narratives about that uh, benchmark, uh, how to use that in every aspect of the building. I'm going to go into that in love very soon. This is the most important slide of the day. It's called u value. What is u value means? It's a heat transparent value. Heat going out from heated space to cooling space or heated coming in from outside to inside. So if you have a space is need cooling and the heat keep coming in, you need more cooling. The opposite is also true. If you need heating and heat co continuously leaking out, then you need more heating. So the U value is the, is the value of the transparent, uh, transparent uh, coefficient, the energy uh, coefficient, how much energy or how much heat uh, going out and going in, heat transparent value, okay. So we, if we learn this U value a uh, little bit details, which we'll do in next few slides, and try to reduce it and understand what kind of material have what kind of U value, and together, what is my U value of the envelope, then we can have factor that in to the simulation to reduce our HBC load. This is very important because your HBC have to work properly. So we have to avoid oversize and we have to avoid undersize to have a comfortable space, right? So this U value, when you learn it, it will help you to reduce cooling demand, reduce heating demand, reduce the energy requirements for ventilation, reducing energy use for lighting, reducing energy use for heating water, reducing electricity consumption of office equipment and appliances, and good housekeeping and people solutions. One thing I want to tell you here, even we are talking about HPAC, but you will find there are so many other things related to HPAC, right? This HPAC load factor in so many different things and that I'll show you how many things that factor in for the better envelope, okay? And this should start from the design level, okay? If uh, design was not good and you are uh, asking us to do the cooling space with totally glass, right? South facing, so much heat gain, right? Then you have uh, issues. You cannot fix it because design is not there. So in LEED or any sustainable approach, we now doing called integrative design process, meaning all the design person should come together and help each other to create a sustainable building design. Architect alone cannot do it. HBC consultant alone cannot do it. So it have to be combined effort and owner have to be part of it because the cost is issue, right? Everything we do, there is a cost, either positive cost or negative cost, right? So our focus should be in a negative cost, how much cost I can reduce, okay? In Bangladesh today, uh, with my experience, I can tell you, if somebody follow this green building concept, the total construction cost of the building go down two to 5%. Think about it. If you follow this green building concept, your total cost will go down 2 to 5%. Why? Because in design phase, we're going to control the solar gain through glazing. We all understand how much heat gain it will happen through my glass, how much light I need or how much heat is going to get in with lights and how I can manage that, right? And there's a reducing internal heat gain. What are the equipment that I'm going to use that produce heat? Uh, in Bangladesh, you know, uh, lo losing heat is not an issue. Cooling is the issue. That's why you'll find that uh, I'm a little bit heavy on uh, heat gain, not the cooling gain. Okay. Making use of thermal mass and night ventilation to reduce peak temperature. Right? Even the surrounding of the building need to be carefully construct to make sure building don't get heated. Providing effective natural ventilation. So we reduce the mechanical ventilation as much as possible. Reducing lighting load and installing effective lighting control. Avoiding excessive glazing. 
use of shading. If I have to have a glass, then I should have some uh, shading. I'll go detail onto that. Solar control glass, which is called Loewy glass. Selecting equipment with reduced heat output. Separating high heat load process from general accommodation. Making use of thermal mass and night ventilation to reduce peak temperature, reducing heat gain from lighting. Same thing will come back again. Predicting the impact of passive cooling strategies. Meaning, if you have a passive design, but you don't factor in uh, to your HBC load calculation, then the design not going to reduce the load because you're going to do it in a thumb rule basis. Meaning, no benefit to the owner. Reducing heating demand. Limiting the exposed surface area of the building where the heat gain happen is called heat alien effect. Improving air tightness. If your uh, room or closed space is not air tight, you have a very chance to uh, lose your cooling or lose your heating. Reducing the energy requirements for ventilation, building design, effective window design, mixed mood ventilation, mechanical ventilation is going to come into play. How are you going to reduce the lighting uh, energy use? Meaning, if you have better daylight and use that daylight, then you can have a reduced lighting load, right? So it's right there. Energy efficient lighting system, like you have automation, sensors, right? Reducing consumption of office equipment. Of course, you can buy energy efficient uh, equipment, right? And energy use for uh, uh, water heating. All that coming to play for the building. Now, let's talk about little bit of building optimization design concept. Of course, is done by the architect, but we need to be part of that team so we can work with architect about this. See the building design concept, if you want to optimize, there's so many factors coming to play. And that design, you have to cool it down or heat it up. Location, size, orientation, layout, local materials, recycled materials, insulation, air sealing. Window door selection, sustainable material, energy star appliances, LED lighting, water conserving fixtures, efficient HVC, recycle your energy, rainwater collection, renewable energy, solar hot water, intelligent planning, build to last and build something you love. These are all are factored. We have a detailed guideline of all of this, which I'm not going to talk today. I'm going to just give you a hint. Massing is very important. See, option one, option two has the same square footage inside, but option two, almost 50% less required the energy use for cooling and ventilation. Just understand the concept. And if you have sparsely populated building, then the energy load will be uh, one kind, but if you have a less populated building, energy load will be different. And how the population will be uh, spread to the building, right? Left side one is more commingled together, right side one is more ventilated. Okay, just see the concept, right? And then the messing require roof, we're going to talk about that little bit later. Reveal uh, and overha overhangs, acrobatic curves, interior buffer zone, right? Whether your messing is simple or it's sculptural, you should perform basic energy modeling simulations of many different options before you finalize the building design. This is the most important part that whatever we do, we should simulate that to see how that affecting the performance of the building. Now the orientation. Of course, you can see the orientation, how you're going to place the building. Is there any shade you can use? What is around you? You have to do that simulation, right? to see how the sun path going and how that affecting the building. Like south side, north side cannot be the same, right? So these are just a concept I'm just going to go through, right? And the R value, right? Higher the R value is, more insulation is there. The resistance to the heat, resistance with to the uh, uh, cooling coming inside, both. So this is important, right? ER ceiling, we talked about that, you know? You have to make sure the space are very sealed, right? Window door selection. Because window door is the one of the area where the cool goes out and heat comes in or vice versa. Heat goes out, cool comes in. And if there is a leak, your uh, HBC load will be very, very high, right? So you cannot have a leak 
building. Like I was in Canada, we have to do the leak test of the building every two years to make sure there is no leak because the amount of cold is outside and the amount of heating uh, energy cost I have, if I don't uh, mitigate the leak, I'll be in a big time trouble. Okay. So energy efficient appliances is also there. Uh, we talked about that. Now come to our main part, efficient HBCDs and how that related to the building. Okay. So you know HB system for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, right? The first, I'm going to do the design concept a little bit. So you should have programmable thermostat. Every one degree plus minus is a 6% of the HBC load, okay? Say if you are uh, putting your HBC on, uh, if it's a cooling HBC, air condition at 22, the amount of energy it will require, if you put 23, it will require 6% less, right? So our body type is the best temperature is 24 to 28 as for ASHRAE standard. Right? So you can go up to 28 to be have a comfortable space. You don't have to go to 24 or 18 or 16. And that will save you energy. Also do the zoning. Right? Say there is an area where not many people there uh, or maybe only half an hour people sit there like a conference room and your office room is separate. So your conference room and office room is separate. So office is cooled down all day because people is there at the conference room only you, you use air condition when needed. So we should not put them two together. We keep it separately, zoning, right? And then the efficient equipment is very important. Now in HVAC system or air condition system, we call it COP or EER, right? Your COP should be four, per, four or plus. If it's a chiller, it should be five or six if it's possible. EER should be 14, 15, 16. The higher the EER, efficient you are okay and then multi-split unit if you see there's two different space required two different kind of system that is better for the that you can go for it right you have to do a cost calculation that including establishment cost and running cost between brf system and chiller to see in five ten years which one cost you more before you decide which system you're going to use, okay? And then there is a energy recovery ventilator. If you have a fresh air system, then you must use ERV system. So the cold air or hot air don't come in to cool it down. The hot air come in as a cold air with a filtration incorporated into it, right? So make sure if you even especially if you use the split AC, ERB is must because the split AC does not have the fresh air option. So if you use split AC, you'll see in one or two hours close your space, your CO2 level is 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, which is not good for you. You're not going to realize it because you're going to survive on, on that high level of uh, CO2, PPM, uh, 2,000. But day by day, your brain, your body will suffer. That's why we have dementia, we have Alzheimer's disease. So if you have a split AC, your home, your office, please check your CO2 level and then incorporate ERV system. It's good for you. Okay. And when you build something, make sure you love this uh, project, whatever building you're building. Because if you love it, you will do more care. You'll put more time to analyze it. And you can be happy and proud in future time seeing that building, that you are part of that. If you create a building which is performing very well, very comfortable, very healthy, the people going to occupy that space will thank you rest of your, uh, rest of the building life. And that is very important. Okay. Now, let's talk about the building in block. Right? We talk about it, the building in block optimization. But what is in block? How I'm going to do this... Uh, things, right? Very simple. Building in blub is something that protects us from outside. Okay? From outside uh, heat, outside weather, outside rain, outside dust, 
right? All that don't come in because we have a building envelope protect us. It's like a uh, our clothing, right? But it's the entire body that protected. And also, we all know, ninety percent of our time we stay inside. That can be home, that can be office. That can be shopping mall. Even that can be in the, inside your car. We don't stay outside that much. So all this ninety percent of the time, we are protected by a envelope called building envelope or car envelope. Okay, what is that? That's a combination of roof, sub floor, exterior doors, windows, and exterior walls. These are the component of building. Together, called building envelope, and these are the component of the building is responsible to protect us from heat, from dust, from humidity, from outside environment. Okay, now all these five items, if they perform good, then we have a better envelope. Okay, think about this uh, envelope. Say you have a wall, five inch. The amount of heat gain you're going to have in this five inch, if you put insulation and another uh, barrier, the heat gain going to be less. Heat can be opposite, right? If in the cooling country is a heat loss, cool gain is the same thing. Same envelope going to protect you both way. So we have to know this terminology called solar heat gain coefficient is SHGC. This is one of the terminology uh, gonna come into play when you talk about U value, okay? And the U values we talked about, uh, I'm not gonna read it. I'm gonna go to a little bit more here. U value means heat transfer coefficient. Just understand that heating going from one side to other side, okay? So lower the U value is better. I put the formula here. If you ever want to. I uh, calculate your U value of the wall because wall is not just a brick. It's a brick, and there's the plaster on this side, plaster on the other side. Maybe there's insulation somewhere. There's a cavity wall, right? There's a different kind of wall you can do, or different kind of roof you can do, different kind of window you can do. But together you have to find out the U value, not just one item. So there's a formula, but there's so many software out there that you can use to understand the U value. These are all. Uh, some paid softwares, some free software that you can use to understand the U value. Okay. So whenever uh, you do design, make sure that you understand the envelope, all component U value. Put that into your simulation because if you want to do HVAC simulation, you must know the U value of your component of the building. Okay. So the calculation is here for you. Now the limiting U value. U value less. You are in a good shape, okay? So these are the U value uh, in general terms called limiting U value, okay? And then that's a good U value, okay? I'm not going to read it. You see the wall, roof, floor, window. Uh, here the limiting U value, wall, roof, floor, window, and then there's a lead U value. What lead ones? Green building ones. Less U value, but also they factor in the locality. The product is available, so they did not, they are not is in too much into the very low U value because that product is not available around the world. So it's going to be very costly. So cost coming to play. So they have their own U value set up as a baseline. Okay, so this is the graph. If you compare the limiting U value, good U value, and lead U value, so the lead that's the minimum of lead. Lower you can go, you get point on lead for HVAC load reduction. Okay. Sometimes we cannot go to the good level; it's not possible in Bangladesh. Maybe if you have a good sandwich panel, a multi-layer of insulation, it is possible. But in Canada and USA, where there is a very cold, they use good EVLU product because the heat loss is a huge, right? The third most expensive commodity in in cold country like Russia, Canada, and USA, uh, or part of the Europe, is heat uh, cost of heating. Okay, so they need this uh, good U value product. So now let's start with roof. How can you reduce the roofing U value? 
right? We have a slab, say six inch slab on the roof. Just give you an example. Top of that, we can use some sort of over deck insulation. In this slide is based on Bangladesh, but you can figure out in your country, if it's Pakistan or other country, what is available there for over deck insulation, right? The polynam, styrofoam or polyconcrete is another layer of uh, insulation top of the deck to reduce the heat gain, okay? So in Bangladesh, I put together some numbers so people can understand. Uh, so what we did, because we do green building consultancy, we give this option to the people, what is available in Bangladesh. So you have to do the same for your country, if it's Pakistan or any other country, that how you can limit the UV low of your roof, okay? And then top of that, there's something called cool roof, which can reduce your heat island effect, right? Heat gain is something called the roof is consuming the heat and then emitting the heat back to the earth. So atmosphere is getting more hotter. That's called heat island effect. So if I have something top of that roof, then this reflect of heat not going to happen. So the atmosphere is not going to get heated up. Okay, that's called heat island effect. So for that, we can use vegetated, vegetated roof. We can use SRI paint, solar reflective index paint, or we can shed a roof with solar. Anything we put top of that, it will reduce the heat gain. We have to understand the roof is the area that always exposed to sun all day long. So whatever heat is being touched that roof, either come in or reflect or what happened to that. That's what we try to mitigate. That's why you will find all the top floor is more hotter than other floor if there is no proper insulation. And it's require more cooling to do it, uh, reduce it. Okay. Next. Uh, component is wall. Again, is the envelope. Okay. The wall you value. What is the thickness of the wall is very important. And also orientation of the wall. It is a south side, it is a east side, it is a west side, it is a north side, right? You have to understand that and how you value affect you. So in the wall, you can use 10 inch wall, 5 inch wall, there is a cavity wall, there is a three hole brick, there is a cement block. So in your locality, you have to figure it out what kind of wall can give you cost-effective, less UV value? Okay? In Bangladesh, the three-hole brick is the best one. If I put two three-hole bricks side by side, give me 10-inch wall, but work like 22 to 25-inch missionary wall like old days. Okay? I think the Pakistan will be the same. Right? So we have to first find few options and use the UV value software to see what is the u value the cavity wall no matter which format you do will be less u value than regular wall okay so you can find out that and see which one is the cost effective i put some u value again for the wall in bangladesh uh, to uh, understand if you have this copy you can use this uh, for your understanding and i do some comparison on the cost wise if i do this cavity wall how much it will cost if i do uh, three hole brick wall how much it will cost because cost is also important the green have to be cost effective okay it cannot be too costly right the flooring also very important what kind of flooring you have flooring has two three different things that uh, affect the performance of the building first is the heat gain heat loss second is the light right and also uh, the sound very important okay <coughs> Now is the window, one of the biggest uh, culprit or cause of heat loss or heat gain, okay, is the window, the exterior window, right? I have some calculation for natural ventilation, window opening right here for you to understand how you can do natural, what is the window wall ratio should be. I kept it here uh, for you to understand. I'm not going to talk about it that much, right? So it is very important to understand window wall ratio. In lead green building, we do not like too much glass because glass always have less U value than wall, uh, more U value than uh, wall, but worse than wall. Okay, so if you have more glass, the more heat gain, more glare gonna come in. You need glass for daylight, but not so much. So we like to keep it around 
20 to 25 percent window wall ratio. Uh, and let's say don't go over 40 at all, then you will be very difficult for you to qualify. Okay. Again, you have to choose the wall type. Is it open out? Is it sliding? Is it louver? Right? Because all this is going to create your heat gain or heat loss issues. And then there is a shading. If you say I want to use uh, glass in south side, but I'm going to put some shade, so glare not going to come, heat not going to come. Right? Light going to come, but heat not going to come. Then it's okay. Right? So that's the louver coming, shadow coming, canopy coming. Right? So whenever you have a glass exposed to outside, we try to bring it in a little bit void space so the light comes in, not glare, not heat. Okay? So these are different kind of just to make sure that you don't have the heat gain through a uh, window. And then the glass. This is also very important. What kind of glass are you going to use? Regular glass, low E glass, low E double glaze, low E triple glaze, right? That need to be calculated or factor in to your HBC simulation to see which glass cost how much and save how much, right? If glass costs too much, it does not save enough, then I don't recommend that. I'll show you how. Okay. So, what kind of glass... It's, I wrote a few things. The low E glass is the best, but low E glass also have an option. Single low E, double low E, triple low E, I'll show you that. Right? Here, different kind of low E glass. And you will see that U value of that. Okay? Each of the U value will perform differently. Okay? I'm not going to read all that. i just give you the understanding of it. And then, the glass option, I show you this simulation I run. Uh, it is a uh, built-up area of, say, 13,455 square feet, right? Condition area is 9,223 square feet. It's one of our project. So what we did, we changed our regular glass to low glass and do a simulation for HVAC load, cooling load. We find that low glass can save us 13% of the HVAC load. Understand, the low glass cost more than regular glass. So what we did, we figured out that cost of the glass and figured out how much reduction it does on my HBC load and the running cost because it will be efficient more, right? Three to five years. And we find that in two years, the Louis glass cost is paid off, right? Meaning the building will perform better after that without any, and it's still getting savings out of it. So we have to do this simulation all the time. And the last thing, not the least, is surrounding of the building. Okay? What is your driveway? If it is totally concrete, then it will have too much heat. It will consume too much heat, emit too much heat, and that heat is going to come into the building. But if you have an open grid paver or grass grid paver or have some water body on your south side or the air flow side, then you're going to have a better surrounding. If you have too much plantation, also going to help. You can plant in a way that project become always shaded, right? All the hard space is shaded, right? Then you will have a better building, will not get that much heat and you don't have to cool it down. Okay? So these are the very summarized concept on, on uh, green building and HBC load. I hope that you got the idea. I'm sure it's, this time is not enough to talk about all these in very, you know, uh, efficient manner. But I tried to put all this dot together and now I'm ready to take your question. Sir, can you discuss importance of maintenance and regular servicing in ensuring the long term and effectiveness, sustainability of HVAC system in green building? Thank you, sir. Very, very good question, Norman. I really appreciate that. Uh, first, we talked about the installation and design and installation, but the most important part, maintaining the HBC system. That's why LEED has uh, one uh, significant uh, credit called Enhanced Commissioning, which totally uh, geared towards to preventive maintenance, okay, periodic maintenance. Also, 
uh, you guys know uh, we use refrigerant in our HBC system. And refrigerant is one of the cause of global warming, right? So if we don't check it regularly and we don't see the leakage and everything like that, then we don't know what's happening to our system. So the periodic maintenance a must for all HBC system because otherwise uh, it will go bad. Even maybe it's running, but there's no gas, right? It's leaked. So you're not going to get in cooling. It happened in the car most of the time, but it's happened in the door also, uh, in the room also. And if you have a leak on HPC system and you don't detect that, that can cause cancer. So it is very important to understand the equipment that you have. What is the maintenance plan? Is it three, three months, six months, one year, right? What is the preventive maintenance we're going to do? And that needs to be done regularly. Thank you. Very good, sir. Sir, I, I think it was uh, exceptional how you uh, managed to tell us it, uh, all about uh, this in such a short time. I think it, it was extraordinary. Thank you, Adil. I appreciate that. You make my day. Any other question? Assalamu alaikum. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, uh, what are a uh, good sector of research for HVAC systems uh, in Bangladesh? And uh, is it actually feasible to ensure a, a green building in Bangladesh? In, not in Bangladesh, anywhere in the world. Green building is a concept that help you to make a better building with less cost. Simple. It's a better building with less cost. If you do green building right, there's four things happen. Okay. Number one, it will reduce total construction cost because it will, it will prevent all the oversizing. Okay. Second, if you have an efficient building, your running cost will be low. Third, if you have a green building, your indoor air quality, where you live most of the time, will be better. So you'll be more productive. So these three things, and if you do integrative design process, the construction time of the building will be reduced one third. So these are the four benefit is there if you want to get it. People don't know much about it, how these four benefit they can realize, that's why they don't do it. Otherwise, there's a, not a single good reason not to go for green if you building something new. In Bangladesh, we're going very good. Well, now I'm consulting 351 projects. Okay, so that's a huge. So which software are used for simulation in this, in this process? We use a eQuest, uh, one of the version of eQuest that we use most of the time. I put some name on the software that uh, you can see in my slides, uh, you know. So you can use any of them. And all the all the air condition company or is it like a Daikin, Mitsubishi, LG, all they have their software too. You just ask for it and they'll give it to you. Even you can do it in their website. If you know the data of the envelope, uh, right? The space, door, window, orientation, U values, right? And you can use their software to do the simulation. Okay? One more question. Yes, Swab, please. How we are going to select HVT system? What are the conditions? Um, I mean, if we are in US, the same HVT system is going to work in a building and if we are in Bangladesh or in Pakistan or India or is it's going to vary? No, it is vary because of the weather. You know, the HBC system has a, has a performance to do. Say in Bangladesh, we are not there to have a heat generating HBC system yet. Okay, we just need the cooling. But in US and in Canada, you need the heating and cooling. Okay, so it depends on the location, what your HBC system should do. Somewhere you just have to have a fresh air. You don't need a cooling or heating, right? So it's depend on the location and the weather of the location, pattern of the location to uh, incorporate those parts like heating, cooling, fresh air, which one is required, you do that based on the location. It's not specific to same thing for everybody, okay? You have to make that space comfortable, okay? And what I can request all of you, uh, you are the next generation. You're going to build something will last next 50, 100 years. Learn it. 
Because if you go into your career and you come up with idea that can reduce 25% of HBC load for the company or for the owner, they'll love you, right? But you have to show that data that how is going to save them, right? Don't do design in thumb rule now. Do design with simulation and calculation. So you don't oversize, you don't undersize. All of you. Okay, and a huge field. And you are, uh, remember that 11% of total carbon emission done by you, done by us, HBAC community. Okay? So if we can reduce that 2-3%, that's a huge. Right? Only glass changes can reduce 10%. If you can have good calculation, that's one percent of the total carbon emission. If you have the just right glass on the right window, okay. Okay, next question, please. Uh, sir, I'm asking how solar radiation affects the building envelope. It affects big time. That's why you see we talk about it the last slide. That's a driveway. You know, the driveway need to be open grease grad because if it's not, it will emit the heat with a like a heat alien effect and that heat gonna go into the building so even the surrounding is very important so that's your radiation radiation and heat alien effect is also similar thing so you have to do this uh, surrounding of the building in a way that does not produce heat because it does produce heat it's gonna come into the building simple as that uh, sir, if green building is good, then why it is not used in our country, uh, Pakistan, India, and uh, Bangladesh? What are the pro Bangla problem? The biggest problem faces? is biggest problem is knowledge gap. Okay, I think that I what I talked about today is very basic, but some of you find very new because there is a gap of understanding. Okay, so I just visited Pakistan uh, in last uh, few months ago. And I've been into Lahore, Karachi, Islamabad. And I talked to uh, HBC society, Ashrai chapters, right? Uh, your universities. And I find that not many people really learn it well. That what is this uh, things that give them. We think that green building is a certificate. No, certificate is aftermath. It's just a something comes with. Like you go to the college to get a degree. But degree is not going to make your career shining if you don't know nothing, right? Same like green building. If you do green building properly, certificate is not much important. Important is how the building is performing. I went to uh, Karachi. I found that glass, 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 south side, and people putting all this split AC, even uh, some you know, big offices. I make a meeting. They have a split AC. The glass is in south side. So much heat coming in. And nobody knows what happened. They think like this is the reality. No. We make a bad design of the building. Same in Bangladesh. But Bangladesh is changing because of us. Few of us, Ashray, a Bangladesh chapter, me and other green building consultants, we are promoting this and people are catching up. So you guys have to do the same. I ask all of you to learn green building. Not for the certificate, not for the consultancy, to understand how to make better building. How to make better space where people live in or, you know, spend their time. Okay. And you can see my uh, YouTube video also. You'll see the project, how it affects. If we can tell people it is beneficial to them, then they will do it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Assalamu Anybody alaikum, else? Sir. Yes. Jafrul. Uh, sir, in, in a already built building, how can we improve the HVAC system uh, in a low cost kind of way? Okay, this is a very important question. Okay, see the new word or terminology that we are hearing today is called building decarbonization, right? The building decarbonization is nothing to do with the new building, it's to do with the existing building. Because this global warming happening today based on all the existing building we have. Forget about the new one is coming. So we, that's why in a, in a lead, there is a rating system called existing building operation and maintenance. Lead EB. Okay. What means that in existing building, we should do a thorough energy audit, uh, level one, level two, and find out where 
the opportunity there to reduce the heat gain and improve the HBC system. Recently, I have a project, uh, lead project, existing building project, become the best green building in all categories in the world called SM Sourcing. If you go to my Facebook page, you will see that details. Or if you go to the uh, my YouTube channel, you'll find that. This project received 106 points out of 110. And this is a very, uh, uh, it's a shed, uh, garments factory shed. And inside, in summertime, the temperature raised to 38, 40 degrees. People cannot work there. So what we did, we changed the roof sheet. We put SRI paint, top of that we put some ventilation and we put some solar. Now, this last summer, this just past summer, the temperature never went up to 30 degrees. The 40 to 30 degrees, meaning no air condition, just the ventilation. Okay. So now this building become the best green building ever, but it's the existing building category. So any existing building, if they go through a process, of finding where they can improve the performance of their system, they can. And uh, in Bangladesh, we do a preliminary assessment of existing building free of cost. So we tell them ahead of the time. Even in Pakistan, I visited uh, four factories uh, in Karachi and gave them the report uh, the, how they can uh, come up to the green building level. And it is possible. Okay. Sir, can you say the name of the building again? SM Sourcing. SM. I write it down in the in the in the. That's the project name. You put this project name in the UGBC uh, uh, category, uh, UGBC directory, project directory, Bangladesh. You will find it. It's got one hundred six point. It's the highest rated building in the world right now. In all categories except homes, all commercial categories. Okay, new building, existing building, interior, uh, and it's got the highest. Point. Okay, anybody else have any question? Thank you, sir. Yes, Hello, sir. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, Muhammad, what, what are the challenges and opportunities associated with green buildings? Challenges is the knowledge. Opportunity is endless. If you learn enough. You can do it. I give you my personal experience. Okay. I was in Canada doing completely different things. I was very established. Okay. But what I did in Canada has no value in Bangladesh. Okay. So I came to Bangladesh to take care of my mother at 2010. And I start find that this green building concept need to be promoted in Bangladesh because it's, it is required. It save energy. It can make people more profitable any project. So I learn it and I start promoting it. Eventually, everything I learn is online. I got these five credentials learning online. Now today I'm consulting 350 project. Say so each project pay me 10 lakh tak. Okay. How much money I'm making? 10 lakh into 350 times in 10 years. You do the numbers. And I learned everything from online. So you can do the same. Maybe it will take some time for you to learn it. But if you learn it, it will be a profitable venture for your life. And at the same time, I'm creating a space that will be less energy use, less water use, right? And it's good for the earth. How nice is that? Right? But you have to learn it. You have to learn to add value to the company that you work for. Okay? Then it will be very profitable. And in the world right now, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, the sustainable industry. And you can tap in. And thank you today that you are start learning today. Right? You can do, you can become a um, lead gain building consultant in Pakistan. All the courses is available. I have team in Karachi. If you want to get in, Karachi um, Pakistan chapter can help you. You know, no issues. Just your intention. Of course, it will take time for you to learn. But after you learning, this guy is the limit. 
Anybody else? Yes, sir. <coughs> yes. Um, Muhammad Bakar is here, sir. Spokesperson, Ashray Must Chapter, Birpur University of Science and Technology. Okay. A couple of questions, sir. You know, first of all, uh, uh, please tell us about indoor air quality and how it has good impact in ensuring overall quality. The second is that how we compare between in the indoor air quality with the green buildings. Okay. First, you have to know what is indoor. We don't call it just air quality. We call it indoor environmental quality. Okay. I, E, Q, environment. All right. Air is part of that. Okay. So what is indoor environment? Is the light? Is the air? Is the sound level? Temperature? Dust level? Humidity level? All this has a limit, what is good and what is bad. That limit set by ASHRAE standard, ESNA standard, and few other standards. So first you have to know that, okay? If you are ASHRAE, you should uh, get to the ASHRAE uh, uh, 55 standard and 62 standard, you know, download it. And you see what they say. And then when you build a space or you have a space, compare that space performance to this benchmark standard and see if you need to improve it, right? The easy way to do it, if you don't do all of them, just buy a CO2 monitor, carbon dioxide monitor, and go into the room where is split AC. And after, say, half an hour you are in the room, split AC is running, there is nothing open in the room, and you put that CO2 monitor on the table and put it on. You will see the CO2 level is 1,000, 1,500 or plus. That means the CO2 level is no longer in a healthy limit. Healthy limit is 800. So this way, if you learn the parameters of indoor environment in every aspect, like light lux level, what is the perfect lux level for your eyes? 4 to 500. If you write something down, it's 700. But what is your lux level? If it's high or it's low? If it is low, it will put pressure on your eyes. If it is high, it will give you glare on your eyes. Both of them are not good. So you have to first learn the parameters of all this component of indoor environment and then evaluate that compared to your space. And if you come to this level, this benchmark level, and then you submit that to any rating system, they will call you green. Green building is nothing but a rating system or checklist how good you are at certain you know, parameters on certain things. Nothing else. It's just a checklist. Okay? If you meet all these parameters, you will be called green building. Why? It is good for you. Okay? Okay. Uh, uh, Isham, you raise hand, please. Go ahead. Uh, Isham, I see your hand. Sir. Yes, welcome. Isham from Bangladesh. So yes. I was thinking, sir, that... Uh, uh, you already have said that uh, there is a knowledge gap between us and uh, between the uh, our education system. So I was thinking that if we, the students, current students, could get any chance to work with uh, professional levels, not really work, just to just want to learn or just got the get the opportunity to learn with the professionals uh, practically, so that uh, and uh, so we can learn it more well than theoretically or so we can get a practical hand-on experience uh, from our student life or like we can get the practical knowledge from before beginning our job life. I tell you what, I, I give you, there's two things. You always can come and talk to us and, uh, you know, learn from us. It's a first option, right? Uh, you can do interny, uh, intern, interny with us if you like that. But the best option, I can give you a template. It's called self-energy audit template. Okay. And you take this template and use this template against your building, the asked building, which is in Tejka. Okay. Create a report and give it to your uh, VC. This is we did an energy audit for this building. Not the detailed one. It's called which one you can do without equipment. Right. And this is the energy audit report. Sir, can we fix this? These are all mitigated items. Okay? 
So you can start doing that kind of things. Become proactive. Like I said, when I started green building, I did not have another Anant Ahmed to ask. I figured out. And you can do the same. Okay? Talk to me later and I'll show you a few other ones. Okay? Thank you, sir. Sir, could you please that template uh, say that template sure. one more again. Just ask, so ask, ask Faisal Bhai and he will communicate with you and give it to you. I have that. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No sir. problem. Sir, I am Zaryab Zafar from Mirpur uh, University of Science and Technology and module head of uh, SJ Chapter Must. Sir, I have a question that uh, how green building affect the climate change? Huge. Like I said, the green building uh, now is causing the building causing 39%. So if, if the building uh, reduced to 20% of energy consumption or carbon emission, which is possible. In Bangladesh, all building we do green, we reduce carbon emission more than 25%. So if we do every building in the world in a green building way, our carbon emission is not going to be issues. Okay? But you have to learn it and do it right. Uh, FA23, you raise hand, please uh, ask your question. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Muhammad Zulkinal. I am from Yipu University of Science and Technology, spokesperson in Asher Must Chapter. So basically my question is uh, that we studied that in the countries where there is extremely hot temperature or extremely cold temperature, we can deal with green buildings easily. But in a country that experiences both, what are the challenges being taken or that are into our faces that we can't do that in those countries? What are the main challenges in those countries? Like I said, uh, again, the green building is not a one shoe fits all. It's a very location-oriented uh, checklist or methodology. So no matter which condition you are in, you can use this concept and get better. I tell you where information is very important, that in the world, 183 countries or territory has green building, lead building, lead building, 183. That means it does not matter where they are. The, when you understand the concept, and apply that concept to the building, it will get better. Even they, there's so many buildings, you say, I don't want the LEED certificate. Fine. Use the concept. Use the concept and get better. Okay? And if you want the recognition, if that's helpful, you go for recognition. Certificate is not the issue here. Issue is, if you understand the concept, then you apply that concept to that particular design, and make the design more efficient, now you have a game building. Okay? It's a concept. Understand the concept. Yes, sir. But in the countries that experiences both temperatures, isn't the cost a bit more than the countries that experience a single temperature? It, see, if the country has a heat and cold, both problem, they become double benefited because the envelope will be better and they will save in heating cost, they will save in energy cost. Right? I tell you, if I do a green building and this building reduce the energy consumption by 25%, right? And the, say energy cost of this particular building is 1 lakh taka. I save 25,000 taka per month. How much money I save a year and two? But it doesn't cost that much. Same with the heat gain, you know? So more, more energy, if you use energy for either heat or coal, you save more you become more green and you become more benefited. So it's not challenging. It's more opportunity, you can say. Thank you, everybody, sir, for, for your time. Yes. Sir, we have invited our esteemed teacher and uh, advisor, HMS chapter. Uh, he will uh, conclude this session with closing marks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum good session and uh, we gain a very insightful that I have been teaching to my students that you should uh, go to the market and search for the applications especially for the simulation softwares we are looking forward to them uh, because in the student life this is a thing they can learn easily so I will uh, will be much more interested if you put up more sessions for the of uh, simulation and optimization sessions with us as well. 
and uh, sure. I also thank Bangladesh chapter uh, president Ashraf Must and vice president whole team body that they organize this may uh, workshop very nicely and hope to collaborate in future as well with you. Thank you thank very you, much. Sir. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, everybody, then. Uh, very good time. I, have, I enjoyed this session myself very well. And you guys are so number. All I can say, be curious, uh, be proactive, and opportunity is endless. And we must do it because uh, this climate change, this global warming, we can become part of the solution. You all can become part of the solutions. Thank you very much.